Welcome back to the Mars VR Indiegogo campaign. We're now into week two. And we have some really exciting updates for everybody. James, can you tell us a few teasers about what's to come today? Well, we've got some new reward levels we're going to talk about. We're also going to talk about our plans for schools and some partner announcements. Let's start with some updates. We've had some big things happening this week. James, break us down with those numbers, please. Well, we're currently at $81,585 with 92 backers and 27 days left in the campaign. We also were featured on the front page of space.com and today we were featured on Indiegogo's front page. That's incredible. What does that mean as far as a percentage of goal? Well, we're at 81% of our goal and we're about 36% of the time expended. So still about two thirds remaining in terms of the 45 day campaign. It's also worth noting that the $100,000 level is not our ultimate goal. That was just a really good level to set, right? Absolutely. What it means that we're at 81 now is that we're hitting a lot of the initial milestones we had. We're going to be able to get this out as the first public release this year. We're going to be able to do the training we want to do and the multi-user scenarios. Now, if we exceed 100,000, we're going to be able to get into helping schools and museums much faster. You had some amazing interviews this week too. Questions came up that I think need answering and to give everybody the details thereof. The question came up as whether we would make a solution or a module that would work on a smartphone. So with smartphones, we can do a module specifically for smartphones, but it is going to be limited versus what we have for the normal experiences because of the inherent limitations of those devices in terms of what storage they have and the processor speed. Uh, most smartphone apps are going to be streamed down from a server and ours is trying to be self-contained. So by default, we're gonna put everything onto a PC, uh, as well as into most common VR headsets. But we would like to explore putting it on the Quest and the Quest 2, as well as smartphones and tablets as well. So Jeff, we also got a question from Damian Mead, who was asking about using NASA's Mars terrain data. Is that VR ready? Not quite. In fact, there's a lot of processing needs to go on. But we absolutely want to use NASA data, as well as other data, and things that have been optimized and processed through people like Damien. So we want this to be a collaborative effort. But in short, we absolutely want to use that NASA data, because it's the only way to make this as scientifically accurate as possible. Yeah, and another team that we've talked to is Mars One Genesis, who's working on atmospheric and physics models, which we may be able to use for Mars VR. And that's open source as well, is that right? That's right, it is. Another great question that came up is, are pledges to support Mars VR and the Mars Society tax deductible? They absolutely are. The Mars Society is a 501c3, and any of the Indiegogo pledges will be tax deductible. We can provide donation receipts to anyone who asks. James, we had another great question from Kim of Mexico that said, why are you guys focusing on VR for this? Well, VR provides the most immersive experience. You're going to have 360 video and graphics, surround sound and also DICE. And for everyone out there who doesn't know the acronym DICE, it stands for Dangerous, Impossible, Counterintuitive, and Expensive. A solution like Mars VR actually covers all of those very well in a way that is best captured in VR, while it will work on a PC and for many modules. And Jeff, didn't your son ask you recently what it would be like to go outside without a spacesuit on? A lot of people don't know the answer to that. What's great about the experience we're building here is you'll be able to test out some of these scenarios. So that suit costs $12 million. There's a reason it costs that much money. If you're in the airlock and you don't put it on, you go outside, in our, one of the training modules, you'll be able to find out for yourself. And that's exactly the point, James. In VR, you can do anything in a safe and comfortable way. Next on the agenda, we're talking about modules, and we've actually come up with some really fun and interesting deep dives into what's going to be on offer for everybody out there. Our gamified science modules are going to be fun and STEM-based and cover biology, physics, chemistry, and geology. And they're going to allow students, PC folks, as well as VR gamers to incorporate the whole DICE theme into a learning experience. We're really excited about our rover driving module, which we call Rover Explorer. We're going to include with it a steering wheel, a headset, and a Your VR. And what that really means, it's a self-contained driving motion simulator. So we can take it to schools and museums 
and give everybody the experience of actually driving on Mars. I think that's going to be really popular at the schools especially. That brings us on nicely to the rewards section. We'd like to give some updates about really what's been going on with the rewards and we're going to expand upon those. James, can you give us some details? Uh, we're going to roll out some new rewards this week. We already had a reward level for schools to sponsor a school at the $500 level. What that means is you'll be able to help us get this into a single school that you choose. We will make sure that the students there have a one day experience with Mars VR. We're also going to now add a $2,000 reward level to permanently put Mars VR into that school. We would send them out hardware that they could use permanently. James, the feedback we've had so far has helped us really cater these rewards to our audience. When it comes to our partners, can you give a quick list of some of the current partners we have and perhaps a little nugget of what's to come? Yes, we're really excited to announce that in addition to Infinidec, which we mentioned last week, we're now partnering with Tesla Suit, which makes a full body haptic VR suit. So Jeff, we've had a lot of discussions this week, but we also want others' feedback. As you know, and I know James, feedback is essential for making this appropriate for everyone, giving everybody the experience they need. We would like to get it into more schools, more museums, make it even better for people on Steam, whether on a PC or in your VR, or even possibly on a Quest or a, a tablet or phone. All of that feedback is vital for us to make this, not only the campaign a success, but make the solution, the experience a success for everybody out there. And with that being said, James, and for everybody out there, remember to learn the science and live the journey. And we'll see you on Mars. Mars.